take out a 2006 F-150 that has an overheating condition, it has a 5.4 liter 3 valve in it, and the temp gauge went all the way to the red, and then coolant just started puking out of the bottle. I pulled codes on it and had a P-1285, which is a, a cylinder head over temp detected code, and uh, the, what you need to realize on these ones, these engines, the 4.6 and the 5.4 liter of this era, is that they're known for the thermostats to stick closed, whereas some of the new four cylinders Ford has out in their product line, their thermostats are actually known to stick open, and that will also set a code because the engine never goes in the closed loop for emissions and all that stuff. So the procedure is pretty simple, but I want to go over it in detail from start to finish and uh, give you a few tips along the way so we can get it done, we can get it done right. Alright, first things first, we want to relieve a cooling system pressure. You need to find your radiator cap on top of your radiator, or as in most Ford systems, they have an external uh, separate coolant bottle that's pressurized called a degas bottle like this one. We're going to want to remove the cap slowly. You're going to want to start this procedure on a cooled engine. And we'll put the cap to the side. So in order to do that, we need to drain the old coolant out first. So get your drain bucket out so we can drain it into there and catch all the old stuff so it can be recycled. And on the F-150, it's on the passenger side. It'll always be on the bottom, obviously. And it'll look something like this one right here. It's got a 19 millimeter head on here in case you need to use a, a socket on there. I usually use a, a plier just to open them up. And I put a hose on mine so that it goes down into the bucket instead of draining it all over the frame rail. It gets kind of messy. So let's open that up and let it fully drain out of there. Now while the coolant's draining, we can start getting some of this air intake stuff out of here so we can get direct access to that thermostat and we're not fighting everything. So there should be a 10 millimeter bolt right here that holds in this intake snorkel. This one does not have one on it, so I'll just yank it off here. Wiggle it like this, and it should pop out like that. And then same thing over here. And then we're gonna pull the actual air box off of here. There's uh, four studs on it that are 10 millimeter. Get all those out of there so we don't lose them down the uh, intake there. And then there's a mass airflow connector right here, red tang, pull it back, push down the black tang, and it'll come off to the side. And then on this side over here, there's a uh, vent line on here for the PCV system. And then this whole thing should just lift off of here. And now we have nice and uh, clear access to the thermostat housing here. So we can put this back onto here when we're done, nice and square, when we're not fighting and cross-threading bolts. Now is also a good time to clean that throttle body in case you haven't already. I got a whole video on how to clean those electronic throttle bodies without ruining them. Now what I do that I think works best in most situations, especially a situation like this where it's very easy to get to on the 4.6 and the 5.4 liter uh, three valve engines and two valves, is to actually pull off the thermostat neck and the hose together. Once you start taking apart these uh, pieces like the hose from the neck and you move the clamp position, you can actually cause new leaks uh, in your system after the repair. You don't want that. It's easy enough to do all together. So it's two 8 millimeter bolts and our cooling system is fully drained now. So we shouldn't have a lot of spillover. Just in case, I do put rags all around the housing here just to catch as much coolant as possible because there will be some inside of the actual crossover on here. And this is going to be stuck to the lower crossover there because the uh, O-ring in there gets dry rotted over the years. So just give it a little wiggle and it'll pop off of there. You can see it's stuck to it pretty good. Pull that off of there. And once the O-ring's out, this thermostat itself should come out. 
And then you're just going to want to clean inside of here the best you can with a little bit of scotch right? So the, the sealing surfaces inside of here actually seal up and we don't have no coolant bypassing. I've seen them where they were uh, so bad in here that the coolant bypass thermostat and of course it would set codes for uh, the engine running too cool. We get it cleaned up in there. Some staining is normal. And then we're going to take our rag, get all that debris out of there, so we can start placing our new thermostat in there. Now putting the thermostat back in, there is no orientation for the bleeder right here as to where it goes. You can put it anywhere in the housing. I like to put it straight in like that. One thing that does matter is orientation of the thermostat itself. It goes in just like this, the dome here pointing up towards the upper radiator hose, it does not, it does not go in like this. Okay, so it needs to go in just like this. And then in goes our O-ring. And just tuck it in there all the way around so it fully seats in there on the thermostat. That way it's not all bunched up or rolled over or anything weird like that. And the same thing applies to the, the thermostat housing neck on here. It has that chamfered edge where it actually seats in there. You want that all cleaned up so it self-centers in that O-ring and it seals up for us. After that, just put it in there squarely down onto that O-ring. And then we're going to start getting our bolts threaded by hand. It's very important to thread them by hand because it's all aluminum housings and they will cross thread in an instant, then it's a nightmare. With one hand, make sure it's squared up in there still, and flat, and then you can start tightening down these bolts evenly, side to side. and then we could do a final torque on them. And the torque spec on these is 89 inch-pounds. Pull your rags out of here. And then we just bolt it all back together. Get it pushed down on your throttle body first. Just start lining these bolts up. Get all four of them before you start tightening them down. That way it aligns it just like that. And what I do to get that air box sealed to the throttle body is tighten the back ones first these two back here. Don't forget your hose connection on this side. Pushes right on, snaps in, and then your mass airflow sensor connector here. Air snorkel back in place. Do the fender well first, get it fully seated in there, twist, and then over here, snaps in, and of course that bolt would go right here at 10 millimeter bolt. Now once the system is fully drained all the old water out of there, put the uh, drain cock back in there and tighten it up. And then we're going to start filling the cooling system. And it's always a good idea, obviously, to pre-mix before you start pouring it in there. And then we're going to start it, let it run at an idle until it gets to operating temperature, and constantly wash that bottle because it's going to keep purging the air out of there, and you don't want it to get too low. And once you're satisfied, it's bled out all the way. Put your cap back on. 
make sure your coolant levels at the, at the mark on here. And then go for a road test to make sure that the engine does not overheat and that you have plenty of heat inside the cabin there uh, coming through the vents. That will tell you if there's air pockets in the system or not. One last check of the system now that the cap back on and we have some pressure built up in the system over here at the thermostat. Make sure that there's no leaks all the way around it.